chapter seven of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva bray bank i can't see curtis said mrs janey in the smoking-room why you chose to ask those vulgar rays to bray bank it almost seems as if you were carrying your business relationships too far the woman is pretty enough i dare say her easy western ways will be attractive to the masculine portion of your guests but the man is impossible absolutely impossible he does not even use correct english and his manners atrocious the palms of the good lady's hands as she raised them in her righteous wrath were very pink on the inside like the petals of rosebuds they were sheltered hands very soft and plump and their fingers bore many large and expensive jewels mrs janey was made up wholly of convex curves which neither art nor starvation could deflect the roundness of her face was further accented by concentric curves at brows mouth and chin which gave the impression of a series of parentheses it would not be stretching the figure too far to add that mrs janey in most of their few affiliations bore a somewhat parenthetical relation to her husband her life as well as her conversation was made up of asides to which curtis janey was not in the habit of paying the slightest attention her present remarks however seemed to merit a reply my dear amelia he said tolerantly from his easy chair when we were first married you used to say that all a man needed to make his way in new york was a dress suit and a smile ray has both besides it is quite necessary to be on good terms with him as for his wife i have rarely seen a girl who created such an agreeable impression cornelius bent has taken them up he has his reasons for doing so so have i i'll trouble you therefore to be civil he got up and put down his cigar and mrs janey shrugged her shoulders into a more pronounced convexity i won't question your motives curtis though of course i know you have them but i don't think we can afford to jeopardize our standing by always taking up new people like the rays the man is vulgar the woman provincial mr janey by this time had taken up the telephone and was ordering the wagons to the station why gretchen dear you're late it's almost train time miss janey entered in riding clothes from the terrace bringing traces of the fine november weather she was a tall slender girl of the athletic type sinuous and strong with a skin so firm and ruddy from the air that it glowed crisply as though shot with mica is it mother cortland and i had such a wonderful ride he is really quite the nicest man in the world aren't you court of course i am said bent laughing as he entered anything gretchen says that's because i never made love to her isn't it gretchen partly love is so silly you know daddy i've given court his congé janey turned testily what nonsense you children talk i mean it though daddy she went on calmly i'm too fond of court ever to think of marrying him we settled that still more definitely to-day since you were so inconsiderate you two as to neglect to provide me with a brother i've adopted court really gretchen you're getting more hopeless every day sighed her mother what does courtland say i laughed bent what is there left for me to say we're hopelessly friendly that's all i'm afraid there's nothing left but to take to drink may i he lifted the decanter of scotch and poured himself a drink but janey with a scowl in the direction of his daughter left the room you mustn't speak so heartlessly dear said mrs janey you know it always makes your father angry you must be patient with her courtland i am said that gentleman helping himself to a cigarette i'm the soul of patience mrs janey i've pleaded and begged 
i've even threatened suicide but all to no purpose there's no satisfaction in shooting oneself on account of a girl who's going to laugh at your funeral he threw himself hopelessly into a big english chair and sighed exuberantly while gretchen gave him a reproachful look over her mother's shoulder my poor boy don't give her up said the lady genuinely all will come right in time i'm sure you must be sweeter to him gretchen you really must i suppose i must said gretchen with an air of resignation i'll not be any more cruel than i can help when the good lady left the room they looked at each other for a moment and then burst into shameless laughter poor mother she never had a sense of humour i wouldn't laugh at your funeral though court that was unkind you know i'm afraid father is very much provoked bent's laughter died and he gazed at the ash of his cigarette he's really quite serious about it isn't he oh yes it's an awful nuisance because in his way he has a will as strong as mine bent smiled i'm glad i'm not in his boots you're fearfully stubborn gretchen because i insist on marrying whom i choose because you insist on not marrying me miss janey sank in a chair by the table fingering the pages of a magazine she said nothing in reply but in a few moments spoke carelessly tell me something about lawrence berkeley will you larry you've only met him once your curiosity is indecent you know he's coming here with the rays not really that's going a bit strong i don't think i'll stand for that oh yes you will he's quite as good as we are he belongs to the berkeleys of virginia mrs rumson knows them that's convincing any one aunt caroline knows will need no card to st peter oh larry's all right but i warn you not to fall in love with him that's precisely what i've done she asserted he glanced at her amusedly but she met his look coolly it's true court he's actually the only man i've met since i came out who really isn't eligible i'm so delighted of course father would never have permitted it if he'd only known that mr berkeley wasn't rich he hasn't much use for poor people oh he's well enough off i suppose as mr ray's partner but then he doesn't own any of that fabulous gold mine how do you know all these things he told me besides he's terribly good-looking and has something the matter with his lungs well of all the that's why he's been living in the west but he's quite well now isn't it splendid i only hope he'll like me don't you think he has wonderful eyes i'm sure i never notice see here gretchen you're talking rot i'm going to tell your father oh i don't care airily but if you do i'll tell mr ray ray yes that you're in love with his wife miss janey exploded this bombshell casually while she removed her hat watching him carefully meanwhile in the mirror if she had planned her coup she could not have been more fully rewarded for cortland started up clutching at the chair arms his face aghast but when his eyes met hers in the mirror he sank back again laughing uneasily what who on earth put that silly idea into your head you yourself i watched you at the warringtons what nonsense i've known camilla a long time not so long as you've known me and you never looked at me like that she laid her hat beside her crop on the table then turned quickly and put her hand over his on the chair arm you may trust me cortland dear if i'm going to be your sister i may as well begin at once it's true isn't it he remained silent a long while his gaze fixed on the open fire before him then at last he turned his hand over so that his fingers clasped hers yes he whispered it's true gretchen it's true i'm so sorry court she murmured i suspected from your letters i wish i might have helped you i feel somehow that i am to blame that we ever got engaged won't you tell me how it happened that she married him instead of you no no he said rising and walking to the window she she married ray because because she loved him that's all i wasn't the man 
gretchen watched him wistfully still standing beside the chair he had vacated full of the first deep sympathy she had ever known slowly she walked over and put her hand timidly on his shoulder you'll forgive me won't you court i wouldn't have spoken if i had known how deeply you felt she turned aside with a bitter little laugh isn't it queer that life should be so full of complications everybody expects you and me to marry each other at least everybody but ourselves and we won't because why is that we won't chiefly because everybody expects us to and because it's so easy i'm sure if there was any reason why we shouldn't marry i'd love you quite madly instead of which you're in love with a married woman and i i'm interested in a youth with sad romantic eyes and an impaired breathing apparatus gretchen don't be silly he said smiling in spite of himself i'm really serious you'll see she stopped and clutched bent's arm tell me court he's not married already is he you silly child not that i know of berkeley is a conscientious sort of a bird he wouldn't have let you make love to him i didn't with dignity we talked about the weather mostly that must have been romantic court i'll not speak to you again she rushed past him to the window her head erect outside was the whir of an arriving motor how tiresome here come the billy havilands she said and they'll want to be playing auction at once they always do as if there was nothing but bridge in the world she sniffed i wish we were going to be fewer in number just you and i and and larry yes and mrs ray she put in viciously curtis janey was already in the big stair hall to welcome the arrivals billy dorothy welcome of course you had to bring your buzz wagon i suppose i'll be driven to build a garage some day but it will be well down by the east lodge do you expect to follow in that thing rita awfully glad your hunter came over last night he looks fit as a fiddle aren't you cold gretchen dear ring for tea noiseless maids and men-servants appeared appropriated wraps and hand baggage and departed we timed it nicely said haviland looking at his watch forty-seven from the ferry we passed your wagons a moment ago gretchen who's the red-haired girl with the rumsons et tu brute that's mrs ray none of us has a chance when she's around here they are now the two station wagons drew up at the terrace and the guests dismounted mr and mrs rumsen with the rays in the station wagon and the baroness charny the warringtons jack perrault and lawrence berkeley in the bus well worthy got here after all caroline mrs ray would you like to go right up or will you wait for tea ray there's something stronger just inside show him won't you billy ray entered the big hall with a renewed appreciation of the utility of wealth the houses in new york which he had seen were of course built upon a more moderate scale he had still to discover that the men of wealth were learning to make their weekends out of town longer and that the real home life of many of them had been transferred to the country where broad acres and limitless means enabled them to gratify their tastes in developing great estates which would hand down their names in the architectural history of the country when their city houses should be overwhelmed and lost in the march of commerce curtis janey for all his great responsibilities was an open-air man and he took a real delight in his great tudor house and stables the wide entrance hall which so impressed jeff was designed in the ripe palladian manner which distinguished the later work of the great inigo jones this lofty room was the keynote of the building a double cube in shape the staircase which led from the centre opposite the door ornate in a character purely classic the doorways to the other rooms on the same floor masterful in structural arrangement and elegant in their grace and simplicity it almost seemed as though the room had been designed as a framework 
for the two wonderful van dykes which were placed at each side of the stairway jeff smiled as he walked into the smoking-room the smile of possession he realized as never before that taste elegance style were things which could be bought with money as one would buy stock or a piece of real estate the only difference between curtis janey and himself was that his host had an ancestor or two while jeff had none miss janey had quietly and cleverly appropriated lawrence berkeley and was already on her way to the conservatory jack perrault who painted the portraits of fashionable ladies had taken the baroness to the long room where the english pictures were hung camilla after a few polite comments on the dignity of the house sat a little aside in silence cortland bent after a glance toward the door through which miss janey had vanished dropped into the vacant chair beside her i'm so glad to see you she said genuinely you know the magnificence is rather bewildering she paused and lowered her voice it seems as if i hadn't seen you for ages yes he murmured i'm expecting wings any day now i'm almost too good to be true you're an angel she smiled i want you to be good and i'm sure i want you to be true and yet she paused this seems the only case in the world where to be true is to be bad you can't make the sun stop shining i don't think i want it to stop shining altogether you see i'm selfish i want it under a cloud that's all there was a pause significant to them both i am trying camilla i am doing my best you appreciate that yes but it shouldn't be so hard i don't think it would be hard for me in your place his eyes questioned miss janey she is adorable she looked over the rim of her cup at him as she finished her tea my dear court she laughed as she handed it to him the best i can say for you is that you have the worst taste in the world i'm really in love with her myself i can't see what you could have been thinking of any more than i can see what you were thinking of there was a refuge from the danger toward which she felt herself drifting and she took it addressing her nearest neighbor mrs cheyne don't you think men have abominable taste oh yes abominable laughed the lady oh i hate mustaches too don't you camilla turned a shade rosier but her discomfiture was lost in the laughter of those who remembered that cheyne had worn a beard you know i didn't mean just that explained camilla i meant their appreciation of women their sense of the aesthetic an aesthetic mrs ray that's the only word for a man's perceptions a french frock a smart hat a little deft colour and the plainest of us is a match for the gayest lothario they're only bipeds instincts on legs oh i say now rita laughed bent we can't stand for that mrs cheyne put in their host i suppose you think me ungallant if i asked you what kind of instincts women were instincts with wings she purred angels by intuition rhapsodists by occupation and sirens by inheritance we're not in the least afraid of you mr janey i should think not for my part if i knew that one of you was camping on my trail i'd give in at once i'm so glad it's a pet theory of mine that when a woman really sets her cap for a man he had better give up at once for she will win him fortune favoring in the end don't you agree mrs ray i've never thought about it mrs cheyne said camilla slowly by fortune you mean propinquity oh yes and other things laughingly for instance if i had fallen in love with a man i shouldn't stop to consider if he was another woman's husband say your husband mrs ray that would only add a new element of interest 
the more difficult an undertaking the greater satisfaction in the achievement camilla looked at her steadily for a moment i've never thought that any man ought to be dignified by such extraordinary effort a husband so easily won away is not worth keeping the two women had only met once before they both smiled sweetly tolerant their weapons politely sheathed only cortland bent who knew the hearts of both sensed the difference between them you're very flattering rita he broke in especially to the bipeds you've carefully deprived us of every attribute but legs but we still have those and can run but you don't laughed mrs cheyne that's just the point you like the game all of you even your legs aren't proof against flattery stop rita put in betty haviland you're letting out all the secrets of the craft come camilla said cortland rising wouldn't you like to see the horses and dogs it's not nearly dark yet oh yes she cried gladly and then to her host what am i to expect mr janey silver feet troughs and sterilized water oh no said their host not yet but they're worth it the pair made their way through the library and a small corridor which led to the south portico how do you like my cousin rita bent asked when they were alone outside is she your cousin through my mother the davidges quite wonderful eh i don't like her you don't mind my saying so do you not in the least she's not your sort camilla but then nobody ever takes rita seriously she doesn't want them to she's a spoiled darling everybody pets her that bored kind of cleverness is effective but everybody knows she doesn't mean half she says i'd be sorry to think she meant anything she says severely bent laughed i'm afraid you're too sincere for my crowd camilla who is mr cheyne she asked suddenly a perfectly amiable person with a bald head and a passion for domesticity and music both of which rita affects to despise why did she marry him then nobody knows it was one of the marriages that weren't made in heaven that's all few marriages are but they're none the less binding because of that yes i know he said soberly she recognized the minor note and turned the subject quickly what a heavenly spot these are the stables of course and the buildings beyond the kennels mr janey has his own pack corking hounds they've been breeding this strain a long while in england i suppose they're as good as any in the world i'm wild to see them the head groom met them at the door of the carriage house and showed them through the much despised touring car of the havilands occupied a negligible part of the great floor the coach brake carryall station wagons victoria runabouts and brake carts all in royal blue with primrose running gear looked down with an old-fashioned dignity and disapprobation on this product of a new civilization the panelled walls of the room were covered with sporting prints and the trophy room with its cabinets of cups and ribbons bore eloquent testimony to curtis janey's success at horse shows in every large city of the country in the stables camilla lost all sense of restraint a stable had never meant anything like this the cement floors were spotless and the long line of stalls of polished wood with brass newels and fittings shone like the silver in the drawing-room the mats and blankets were of blue and each bore the monogram of the owner in yellow these are the coach and carriage horses camilla bent explained yes ma'am put in the groom the hunters are here and he led the way to the box stalls where is mackinaw mr janey promised him to me for to-morrow oh mackinaw is right here ma'am and a fine bit of flesh he is he went in and threw off the blanket while camilla followed not a blemish he'll take his four rails like they was two just give him his head and you won't be far off when they kill oh what a darling i'm wild to get on him is he gentle 
she patted him on the neck and he nosed her pocket for sugar one by one she saw them all and they reached the kennels in time for the evening meal oh well she sighed as they turned back toward the house i'm almost reconciled to riches one could live in a place like this and forget there was anything else in the world yes perhaps some people might he said significantly i couldn't even if i wanted to the only real joy in life is the memory of sawatch peak at sunset sunsets pass they're symbols of the brevity of things beautiful but the night is long he murmured so long and so dark end of chapter seven